breaking news, Ian. Yeah. I was alerted to this right before we started recording the podcast. Our favorite reality show, Storage Wars, which we've discussed before with a Nintendo game and video game finds, there was another storage locker of video games that just sold to uh, my pal Renee. Oh, uh, your uh, your favorite your 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 favorite one stop shop at uh, the swap meet. Yeah. He used to come to the swap meet. He's talking about his family. He was very nice in the beginning. He turned bitter and kind of sour after a while. He'll probably tweet at me after this segment, probably. But you know what? I'll fire back if he does. But that's okay. I'm going to try to be objective here. Um, he bought a storage unit for fifteen hundred dollars. That they claim had like what was it forty two thousand dollars worth of uh, video game merchandise in it, and they got to that extrapolation after going through some particulars at first that we we saw. We and the problem with with these shows, there's there's two problems, is that they don't show you everything when they go through all these boxes. Right. So that's the first problem. So when they're giving these valuations, it's really tough to know if they're right or not for a lot of this stuff. But we did see some ones we can comment on. The other problem is is that I don't know if they're in a rush to that. He had his assistant with him named Fluffy uh, go through some stuff. And I'm not going to get on him in particular if he was wrong on some valuations. But you don't know. You don't. It, it, it's a rush through it, and you don't know. But and problematically with shows like these. Um, especially because they don't show you everything you see things a quick valuation is applied you don't know what's being missed in a box and this is how uh, and we've we've gotten on this before uh, this is how people end up thinking their trash is worth gold sure and the, the other times that video game showed up was with the NES 101 that they thought was worth whatever, $100,000, what it wasn't. And then when they went the... No, the, the NES 001. 001, is that yeah. what it was? Uh, and then when Daryl went to the, that game store, and then the valuation was, we thought, at least two to three times more than what it should have been. And that was being generous yeah. at the time. So there was a bunch of boxes they found here. But the first thing they had was a, like a tub of Genesis games. Um, about I want to say it was about 150 games. Was that, is that... Yeah, Probably they found they, there was a scat in there too for the NES. There was this, the first thing they find is a scat for the NES with a bunch of Genesis games. I will not say that this stuff is made up, but I think it's strange that the only Nintendo game, the first thing you see on a pile of Genesis games, is a hard to find NES game. That said, they found it there. I'm going to assume everything that they found was there and is real. Yeah. But it was weird that that was on top of that. And maybe they transported it over to sort of sweeten that tub and say this is a better tub. But in that tub, they also found a Musha and a Sunset Riders, um, which is fine. I think the value, well, the valuation is fair for the individual games. 200 yeah. for Musha. I think it's a 200 for Scat. Something and, like that. And 50 for Sunset Riders. That's, on the, that's on the money. The, the problem is what giving a $3,000 valuation to, to the, the remaining, remaining games. tub. <laughs> and when you look at that tub, you see some commons. You see stuff like Lion King real quick. Again, this is flashes of it. Outrun. Uh, Outrun. And these are all loose titles. So these are going to be much less than obviously complete in box. So a $3,000 valuation on about 150 games is $20 each. That's just not possible uh, for that tub. Uh, moving on. This is when Ian's interest really got peaked. Uh, there was a, a box, they said, about 300 Atari games, slash some in television games. I think there was an Emerson Arcadia game in there. A lot of them were... Uh, 7,800. 5,200 games, 5, which I like. I'm a 5,200 fan. Um, valued at like $10 a piece. That's, so, that's insane. So, so, so he just throws out $3,000 for that box because he figures 300 times $10 each. For 5,200... I think there were some 2600 games, Emerson Arcadia, and some miscellaneous games. As you and I know, Ian, selling Atari games loose is one of the hardest things to do to get rid of retro games. Yeah. It's not easy to do. And the higher-end uh, titles that are uncommon might reach $10, $20, but the vast majority of Atari games are less than $5. Even if you average it out and there was some supreme rarities in there, you're not hitting a $10 average per game. Those 300 Atari games, uh, are mo slash intelligence, whatever else, are most likely not uh, $3,000. You'd be lucky to get Eight hundred dollars, probably. Yeah, it's hilarious because that was actually the quote on the nose that I was about. You're to thinking say. about eight hundred. I was thinking about. You get about two fifty each, three dollars, something in that range, and you'd be happy for that. Uh, th there was a tub of. Uh, we didn't see if there's a TurboGrafx sixteen system, but we saw about a stack of ten Hue card TurboGrafx sixteen games. About ten, I eyeballed nine yeah. or ten. We'll just say ten. 
or it was valued at $500. The one that was visible, though, was World Class Baseball, which is arguably the least valuable Turbo Graphics game after Keith Courage and Alpha Zones. I can't say what was underneath it, but, but even but the fact that they were loose, unless those were all extreme heavy hitters, I, I, I you don't know. Yeah, but most likely. I mean, Let's put it this way: If there was a highlight in there that was worth money, and he pulled out a Musha, you think that that person would be like, "Okay, here's Magical <laughs> Chase," or you know, "Here's even uh, I don't know, Parasol Stars," or you know what I mean, or, or something like that. It would have had to have been all stuff like Parasol Stars or Shooters. Here's here's Time Cruise or some uncommon ones. All right, the next one is really strange, just because it was a flash of them fumbling with about five or four Game and Watches, and then saying. 800 for the box. 800 for the box. But that could actually be true because Game & Watches can be worth a lot. The problem with that goes back to what we said about them you don't flashing over stuff. You have no idea what else is in the box. You don't have no idea. I also didn't get to see what Game & Watches they were. Game & Watches can go for a lot, so that could actually be accurate. Could be true. <clears throat> if you have 10 to 20 Game & Watches that are in decent shape... However, $300 for a box containing an NES and some VHS tapes. Okay, we, we made sure that this wasn't like the audio lined up with another <clears throat> visual... Renee leans over a box, has an NES in his hand, flips it, and then there's just VHS tapes underneath. Now, if you want to say there's a there was a layer of box NES game somewhere there, okay, I can see that. But three hundred dollars for an NES by itself and VHS tapes <laughs> that you will be paying people to take from you, I don't see that happening. The next one I thought was the most insane one, just because um, it was two thousand dollars. For a box of it looked like 2600, 7800. There was, I think, an, there could have been an Emerson Arcadia there. It looked like it looked like the box I see at the flea market every other month where there's a dusty old 2600, and then you have a just uh, uh, 80 Atari games thrown next to it, and then the guy wants 40 bucks for all of it, and you take it from him. And they said that was $2,000. If you know anything about Atari 700 and 2600 games, you need almost 2,000 games to get to that valuation of $2,000. It looks like a box I've tripped over numerous times in the back of Luna. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you have your, your classics like uh, Enduro Racer, and uh, you know, you might get your uncommon one, like your Spectra uh, video or something in there that's worth like 5 or $10. But unless they're telling us individually... This one's worth fifty. This is a hundred. This is two hundred dollars for Atari Twenty Six Hundred, which there aren't that many, uh, especially loose. That's not a two thousand dollar box. It ain't. Um, the next one they said fifteen hundred dollars easy. Again, you don't see. I saw like three Tempest Two Thousand Jaguar boxes sitting there. Who the fuck knows what's in there? But with the track record so far, I don't know. A couple other ones. There was a Dusty Turbo Express, uh, two hundred fifty dollars if it's cleaned up and works. I think it's $250 yeah. at this point in time. And then a Bubble Bobble, Bubble Bobble 2 that had some sort of Famicom adapter on I the bottom. I think it was a Famicom adapter on and the bottom. And they said $500 for that. Is that accurate for a loose Bubble Bobble 2 this day and age? I couldn't even tell. Well, I'll look it up right now, or a certain NES guide app could do it uh, for you. But did, 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 not even close. Okay, so this because I feel like we sold a, a like a perfect boxed complete one for about that maybe six months to a year ago. That was sound reasonable for one that had the box. So let's see, two hundred and eighty uh, for a real real one, two hundred and eight dollars. Uh, tons of repros, three forty. Okay, it's not close to that amount, that price valuation. Uh, three forty six, two twenty seven. So we're, you know, if you average it out, we'll just say about three hundred dollars. Yeah. No, okay. I was gonna say a boxed one, I think. Uh, the oh. the complete one went for about five hundred. So do you see a danger in these wild valuations? Yeah, like I said, this is what causes. Uh, well, a when you look at something like Atari, it causes grandmas to go into their attic and see things worth, uh, think that yeah. things are worth them. But it also, uh, this is what causes the market to spike on things that didn't have that value before. The issue with the Atari games in particular is that even if you wanted to get max value for the Atari 2600 games that aren't worth that, that amount of money, the market for Atari 2600 collector is probably 10% or less of an NES collector or right. a Sega Genesis collector. It's so, our pals at Atari age. It's our pals at Atari age. Hey, Atari so, age! So when you're giving these wild <laughs> valuations that, from my, from my expertise, Renee, are 
off for 90% of these. That would even be for pie in the sky if you took your time to collate them, go through them, price them accordingly, and then throw them on eBay with high buy it nows and wait for people to pull the trigger. Not pricing to sell at a convention just to get rid of them, not selling them as a set to get rid of them quickly and recoup some money. The maximum dollar amount when you value video games is based upon usually buy it nows off of eBay that have went. That's the environment that you're placing them on. Not a store environment necessarily, which could be higher or lower, but you could hold on to it. And it, But it also doesn't account for the time it's, it's going to take for you to go through those individual games. So when he says... Time is money. When he says those 300 Atari games is worth $3,000 somehow at $10 a piece, any person that... Any collector that looks at a box of 300 Atari games might say, I'll give you four or $500 for that box. And a reasonable businessman might say, okay, take it. Especially if my investment into this whole unit is only $1,500. Now, I'm a third of the way uh, recouping that cost. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? So th there's a lot of problems with this. Well, the other problem is, too, if, especially if you look at something like Atari. Um, I've noticed two markets for Atari collecting right now. You have 15 and 16-year-old kids who think it's just kind of neat. Who don't have the money to pay an inflated price on Atari games at you know 10, 15 bucks a piece? They're interested in it because they can get the games for two, three bucks a piece, a dollar. And then you have the people at Atari age who have the games that they want. So who are you moving them to? And then the other, the the end of it to get the, the total valuation of the entire unit. He said, "Well, there's 30 more boxes there, like 150 dollars each. That adds like 30 thousand dollars. Whatever the hell he said. We don't know what's in those boxes." We don't know if they're video games because a lot of the other shit they showed were like VHS tapes, some of them. So we have no idea. It could be more, no but it could be. be less. I mean, it's just, it's a random guess. 